Okay, welcome to the press conference for semifinal number two. Joining us right now, we have head coach Kevin Corrigan, Brian Tevlin, and Eric Dobson. We'll start with a statement from coach and then we'll go to questions for the student athletes and the media members. And coach, just remind our media, raise your hand if you have a question, we'll get you in the microphone. And with your first question, just give your name and your affiliation so these guys know who's talking. So coach, we'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Uh, thrilled and proud of our guys. Couldn't couldn't be more happy. Can't wait for Monday. Hey Brian, uh, Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch. Can you just take us through the game winner? What what did you guys draw up? And obviously, pretty quick out of the timeout. So I imagine you got what you were looking for. Yeah, I think uh, first off, just really appreciate the trust that our, my coach is having me. Um, to put the ball on my stick at the end of the game, coming across the middle. Was obviously dodging to the cage, just looking to to get there if I can. Um, but if I didn't, which I I don't think I did at first, uh, send the ball over to Davi, set a pick for him, have him sweep across the top, um, and then obviously you know that's something that we typically like and we we trust eight there. Um, but as I was coming across the top, they shot him off, um, did a little hesitation, bounced out, and then saw an open lane uh, down to the goal, took it, uh, felt him around my neck, thought I was going to have at least a, a flag at the end there, and figure that you know no better time to to shoot it then because. You know, if it goes in, it goes in. If not, our man up's on the field and, and, and trust those guys a lot. Terry Foy inside the cross. Eric, can you describe the way that the second half unfolded? And do you have any memories of the 2014 uh, national championship game or the 2015 semifinals Notre Dame played in? Um, so the second half, first question. Honestly, it was it's kind of a dream still. I think I'm going to watch it and figure out a lot of things that I didn't know actually happened. Um, but in all honesty, we were just clicking. Uh, that happens in sports. They call it often a flow state. And I think that's just what we were. We uh, we were playing a little different than we, than we usually are just because of uh, people taking a different load for different reasons. But uh, I, I just think that we, we did a really good job of, of playing through different uh, different challenges. And uh, we just we just trusted each other. That was the biggest thing. And guys open, put the ball on a stick, let him make a play. And I uh, don't totally know what year uh, you're referring to, but uh, maybe if you give me a couple details. I, I think I remember that one. <laughs> uh, Patrick Stevens from Lacrosse Magazine for either of the players. Uh, the last three timeouts that you called two in regulation, one in overtime, you guys needed a combined 34 seconds to score out of them. What was working right for you guys to be able to find those opportunities that quickly and that efficiently? Yeah, I would say our, our, our guys going hard. Um, you know, we preach dodging to the cage. You know, you don't create offense if you're dodging, looking to pass. You create offense if you're dodging for your own and then making a read off of that. You know, that's something we preach every day. We got a lot of trust in our guys. We got a lot of trust in a lot of different guys. I think we had a couple different iterations of, of six people out there at different points, at, at critical points in the game. Um, and so just going out there and, and dodging for your own and then making the read after that. Yeah, just to kind of go off that, uh, I don't think one time we went out there yet on any of those three times we knew exactly who was going to dodge. Uh, it's just it's all a read and it's all it's all matchup based, and I think we've made the most out of it. Yeah, John Marks, South Bend uh, Tribune. You're three minutes away from. You're down two goals with three minutes to go. You're down under a minute to go. What are you guys thinking, or don't you even have a chance to, to process any of that? I mean, that's kind of why you play, right? Like, you don't you don't play for blowouts. You play to play in big games. And I don't think we lost faith for a second. And, um, yeah, I think we just had trust in ourselves, trust in our defense especially. Our face-off guys were huge for us, getting us the ball back. And, yeah, I think we just – it was a lot of trust all over the field. David Melandro for Sports Talk Philadelphia. Can you just take us through those last two minutes <laughs> and how you were able to tie the game up? And, secondly – your initial thoughts about facing Duke for the national championship? Yeah, I think uh, those last two minutes, just really proud of our guys for for how calm we were and, and how much belief we had in ourselves. You know, obviously not an easy situation to be in, but like like Dobson said, those are the situations you want to be in as a player. You dream about that. You know, you don't you don't dream about you know counting down three, two, one, and, and hitting one to to go up twelve. You you dream about three, two, one, and, and hitting one to send your team to the national championship. Um, I think that we have a lot of guys on this team who have dreamt that and who have thought about that and who have thought about it all year. Um, and so, you know, it's just something that 
we continue to focus and, and, and continue to, to do our, our stuff and trust our system because it works and it's worked all year and, and we have a ton of faith in it and a ton of faith in our coaches to put us in the best situation. Um, and as for, as for Monday, we're just excited for it. Excited to have another practice tomorrow, excited to have another game. You know, it, it's a long season and just another opportunity to play with your brothers is, is obviously all you could ask for. Eric, can you describe uh, Jake's finishing ability and just especially the, the twister to send it to overtime? Yeah, I mean, I originally saw him catch that ball and thought he was going to step in and shoot it, and then he pulled that out. And, I mean, it, it surprises me every time, even though he does that kind of stuff every day. Um, it's stuff I couldn't dream of doing. But, um, yeah, he's just he's just a different type of player. He's he's a guy that has the some of the nicest, craziest hands I've ever seen, and, and he trusts himself, just like I was saying earlier, um, just having trust. Hey guys, uh, Drew Brendan here from One Foot Down. Uh, this question is for Eric. You guys were down 11-9. You guys took a timeout, and coming out of that timeout, you took the ball up top and dodged and made a beautiful pass to Chris Kavanaugh uh, right in front of the crease for a very fast goal. Was that a play designed uh, during the timeout, or was that something that you guys, you know, it just you saw him get wide open as you were about to shoot? Uh, I think it's something we've done before, not a lot, but yeah, that was a draw it up on the whiteboard and let's go play. Any other questions for the student athletes? Yeah, for both of you guys, you outscored them, I think, four to one over the final three minutes in the overtime. One, did you see their defense wearing down at all? And, and two, in that tight a spot, do you feel a little extra energy, a little extra adrenaline? Uh, I mean, first and foremost, they're a great defense. I don't think we necessarily saw them wearing down. We had known where their opportunities were coming um, throughout most of the game. I think we were getting a lot of great looks throughout the game. You know, from my understanding, I think we outshot them maybe by five more, five or more. Um, and so we were getting our looks. We just knew that we got to keep trusting them, and they'll fall. Um, you know, and then obviously just going out there and executing. And I think, like Eric said, you know, we relied heavily on our wings and our faceoff guys, who did an unbelievable job against a guy who has proven himself year in and year out. Uh, and has had a great career at UVA. And so that for them to come up big and, and get us the ball back, I mean, you know, then you're giving it to the hands of, of the Kavanaugh's and, and Dobson and Jake Taylor, and things are going to happen, so. And you. All right, we'll say thank you to student athletes, and they can go back to their teammates in the locker room if they want, and we'll do questions with Coach. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right, questions for coach. Kevin. Oh, Kevin, Christian with Inside Lacrosse. May I ask the message in the timeout with like 252 left and you're down two? May I ask what the message was to the team? We weren't talking about big schemes and, and uh, goal differentials or anything else. We were talking about making the next play. So the message the message was um, you know, we're going to we're going to run this action. If we don't get anything out of it, we're going to go going to flow into this offense. And if we don't get anything out of that, we're going to 10 man ride and and try to get the ball back. We're completely focused on the moment in the game, uh, Christian, and, and, and what came next. Coach, after last season and in the snub and everything, what does it mean to have this group back to the national title game now? I mean, it just listen. Anytime you get to this point in the season, it's it's special, right? And and so um, I don't look at it in the context of last year, right now. This what I do look at is is the context of um, from when this team became a team, you know, in in the fall till now. Uh, and and I've never enjoyed coaching a, a group of guys more because of their focus, their commitment to to what we're doing. They're all in attitude their their love for each other how hard they they I mean you saw it at the end they weren't they weren't bickering and you know what I mean you could come over there with two minutes left and everything else it was just total focus on what do we do now what, what's the next play and and so that makes for an awfully great experience as a coach David Melanger of Sports Talk Philadelphia two-part question one what are your initial thoughts about facing Duke for the national championship and secondly, with the way how the Penn State Duke game ended, would you be in favor of like instant replay on on the questionable call, like the way how that game ended? Two part questions are tough for me <laughs> at this moment. I, I couldn't be more thrilled to play Duke. Uh, you know, listen, we we have a great league. We we play these big games, these big matchups. You know, year after year against these teams. Uh, so it's thrilling to to have a chance to to play Duke again, and and uh, couldn't be more excited about that. As as for uh, you know, D 
the NCAA, there's a time and place for that. I don't think I need to make any comments on that right now. Thank you. Kevin, with respect to uh, Eric's performance, did it bring back any memories of Sergio Perkovic? Ah, you know, I, I mean, he's he's similar, right? In that in that sense that he's just he's something to be dealt with. You know, even even when they were, you know, they they were mixing up short stick on him, long stick on him, short stick, quick slide, you know, whatever. Um, and so you can see that he's already had an effect because because they're they're scheming against him, right? And that that opens up if it doesn't if he isn't in the position because of what they're doing to make plays, it opens up other things. Um, I think one thing about Eric is, is and, I, and it's funny, we told him this, this this weekend, we said, you know, you're underrated as a passer. You might be overrated as a shooter a little bit, um, but you're but you're underrated as a passer. And uh, and he, I think he proved that at the end, uh, you know, with that, with that feed. Coach, there are a number of bounces that didn't go your way. It seemed like the, the first three quarters most with the uh, the rebound goal that came off Napolitano. Just did it seem like from the from the sideline that things just weren't going your way at first? If you sat with us and watched film uh, over the last week, you would have seen us show about ten goals or or, or or twelve goals exactly like those ones that they scored against us uh, in in the last two games. Um, it's not at that point an accident, right? They're really good. At, at call it what you will trash you know spontaneous plays that that you know they make plays out of that stuff all the time it's not an accident um we we were very focused on that and and still gave up uh more of those than, than we'd be comfortable with but but it's so hard in those moments because you know it, a lot of times what happens is a guy is doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing as part of our team defense, right? Collapsing to a spot so that if the ball comes in and then the ball gets ricocheted and goes that way and there's his guy standing there where, you know, where and it looks like, well, why isn't he there? Because he was doing his job and it just got unlucky and the ball went to them. So, um, but, they, but they, they are spectacularly good at making plays out of those things. And, and uh, you know, thankfully uh, we were unable to, we were able to stop enough of them, but um, give him all the credit for those plays. I, yeah, like I say, they're lucky. Maybe it happens that many times. Probably not luck. Hey, Kevin, in the first half, by my count, you used 23 of your 32, and also like the cold water compresses. Was there a, a real sense that you were, wanted to use your depth and to get this game into the fourth quarter and stay fresh? I, I mean, listen, we have an unbelievable support staff. Uh, 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 our trainer, I think, is as good as anybody in the business. Uh, you know, we, we have people that are working behind the scenes. Um, and so that's what they do. You know, they, they're they there. You know, do we know it's going to go to overtime and it's going to matter and we're going to end up playing, you know, 27, 28 guys? No. But but we're preparing for it from the first minute of the game because those people are are dead on professionals who do a great job and we're really fortunate to have that kind of support in our program. Kevin, yeah, how would you evaluate the defensive effort from your guys on Connor Schellenberger and what what did he do that still made him effective today? And you know that I mean I feel like the last two games we've played them in the six on six really really well, but again those those spontaneous disruptive plays where we do everything right, double team a guy, the ball, you know, our guys are collapsing to get it and it shoots right past two of them to their guy standing there. You know, what are you going to do? You know I mean? But, but, but we can't do more than that in terms of defending the known of, of what they were doing. I thought we were really good at that. So then. Uh, Liam Gillis, lacrosse playground. Uh, you won uh, the face off battle 16 to 12 including six of the last nine face-offs of the game. Uh, going against such an established guy like LaSella, did you guys do anything special to repair this week or different out there to approach the face-offs today? Um, also, what does that success, especially late in the game, mean to you? Uh, I'll answer the second part first. We it means everything, right? I mean, it's possessions in a in a game where you're where you're down, especially possession is everything. Um, uh, we worked really, really hard at it. Our guys, our face-off guys have been working really hard at it, but any team in the country will tell you that they work really, really hard at it. Our guys just made plays when we needed them to make plays today. Couldn't couldn't be more proud of of, uh, of, of Colin Hagstrom and, and uh, Will Lynch. They, they both did a great job. And our wing guys who, who just battled. You said they, they played pretty much the same. What was the difference in how you played them since they've beaten you twice and also 
from your Duke game earlier? What can you take from that? I mean, I you know, I don't know. I, I honestly, I, I'll tell you, their goalie played really well today. I mean, I thought, I thought, you know, even when we're down two in the fourth quarter, I'm thinking, man, I think we, I'll take our chances over their chances in a lot of cases, and and I take the the, the things that we created over what they created in a lot of cases. Um, but it doesn't. None of that matters, right? That's that's irrelevant. It's how many times it. it tickles the back of the net there that matters and and uh, their guy was was terrific uh so uh you know but but our guy is as good as as anybody out there and he proves it over and over again um so you know him him you know cleaning up some of our messes um our guys finishing some at the end you know i mean we we went a long time without scoring we, we, did we score on three of the last four shots we had maybe i think so so you know that's <laughs> if that happens earlier in the game it it's fine with me too uh you know duke duke we we played them earlier in the year um they're they're an outstanding team and and obviously uh you know they they had the same battle that we had today right and and so uh you know i think it's going to be a I think it's going to be a, a, a great matchup of, of two teams that know each other well. This will be the sixth time we've played them in the last three years, right? I think so. Yeah, we, we're pretty familiar with, with Duke, we as any, are they with us. We have any last questions? All right, Coach, thank you, and we look thank forward you guys. to seeing you Monday. Appreciate it.